there is a super critical move in the swing that most golfers simply don't perform well. And the problem is that in this particular move I'm going to describe, it can cause a whole chain reaction of bad events and poor movements that will really wreck your chance to be a really good golfer. So if you're looking to improve your golf swing, then by all means, keep watching. Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. So the move that I'm talking about that we're going to discuss today is a very specific combination of motion in the right ankle and the right foot. Now, you wouldn't think that this would be a big deal in the swing. However, when you don't have it down well, like you see here in the pictures I'm showing of Nicholas, Hogan, Sneed, Trevino, Casper, some of the top 10, top 15 of all time, all move their right foot in a very particular fashion. And a lot of you out there at home, you're doing some other combination of movement that's also affecting the positioning of your knee in your downswing, positioning of your hip, your right shoulder, your spine tilt. It's a ground up reaction that's either going to be well done or not so well done. So first let's take a look at a couple of what I would call less optimal motions. Number one, I see a lot of people, it's usually better golfers, they plantar flex the foot, that's lifting the heel. Of course that would kick the knee towards the ball or towards the camera. But the problem with this motion, you're lifting the heel up quite a bit. These are usually golfers that are single digit handicaps. They hit the ball fairly far, but they have a really hard time controlling the left to right dispersion. There are some golfers on tour who do this and they have the same issue. So this motion by itself, the problem with this is that it encourages the rest of the pelvis to follow suit and to push in. So it doesn't allow you to keep the rump line back. Second thing it doesn't allow you to do, it doesn't allow you to laterally slide your hips that five to six inches that we've got to do to transfer the weight to the left foot for power. But instead, it kind of puts an anchor on the, your ability to go more than about three inches. Now, when you're unable to get laterally and you're unable to keep your rump back, these are two things that are really going to help you open up the turn of the torso and the chest to get that arm and hand speed moving and to keep the plane of the swing all the way through to the exit. But instead, the chain reaction will be up with the foot, chest stalls out, body gets tall, hands and handle get out further away, comes in very tall, face open, and now we're into the flip it out to the right uh, motion that gets us in trouble with the two-way miss. So another common motion that I see golfers doing that is less than optimal is it's among more higher handicaps, but also among baseball players. So if you have any baseball in your background, this is definitely something you're going to want to get eyes on, get a camera on, and see if you're moving your foot where your heel is torquing around the toe in a counterclockwise fashion as it lifts something like that. Now, the problem with this is, again, it also it keeps you anchored so your left hip cannot advance into the post, but it gets stuck, so your weight tends to get stuck more back on the back foot. It's harder to shift the weight. It also does not allow the spine to get into a tilted position, so your right hip, your right shoulder end up too high. You turn through it with them too high. Very easy to hit a duck hook or a smother hook from that axis. Again, that foot is dictating the position of the knee the height of the right hip, the height of the right shoulder, the tilt of the spine, the ability to post up and rotate like a lot of guys you see on TV. So now let me describe the correct action. Probably you can identify yourself in one of those two examples, but now let's take a look 
at what I think is the more optimal option here. And that is a combination of movement that involves first the in roll of the right ankle. What I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to first get completely on the side of my foot, the inside of my foot. I want all my spikes on my shoe to be off the ground, totally on the side of my foot. Now already, if you can do this at home, and again, this doesn't, this doesn't require ankle flexibility at all. If you let your knee get into the act, and even to some extent let your hip go with it, you can really turn your foot in. You see how my knee is almost coming up to the front line with my left knee. It's adjacent to that one. So here's the first step. Get on the side of the foot like this. You can see that already I've got to have 99.9% of my weight on the left foot because if I tried to support any weight with my foot in this position, it doesn't. I, I, I'm not in position to support weight. I will collapse if I put any weight on it. So we're trying to get here. And then you're going to combine that move with just a little bit of a lift of the heel and a pushing of the knee out to right center field like this. So the foot will end up in this position. Now, look what happened to my heel. My heel actually ends up working clockwise around the clock. My heel is now slightly more target word than my big toe. It's not a lot. You're not trying to do this or anything with it. You don't go an hour. I don't even know if you go a half an hour, but you're going to go to about 615 with that heel. What this allows you to do, it really frees up the left hip to move down the line it's about six inches or so. It allows the butt, encourages the butt to stay back instead of pushing forward. Encourages the torso to swing open. Now all of a sudden we're in the rock skip position or the shortstop turning the double play. We're right there, chest is opened up, right arm has a free run and you can really hit it long and straight from that position. That has really put you in the position where Hogan describes in his book uh, five lessons. He describes that as the point where he wishes he had three right hands. Once he gets that foot to right about here, that puts him right about here in the slot. And man, he can just pour it on from there. And you will also be able to. Now, looking at it from this angle, instead of going up or backwards with the heel this way. We're going to be rolling in, lifting a little bit. I am trying to get where the only part of my shoe that's touching the ground is right here. This strip right here on the inside of my big toe. Nothing else is allowed to touch the ground. For the rest of your foot, the floor is lava. Get everything else off the ground, get into this position. It'll position your knee and thigh. It'll encourage your rump to stay back, encourage rotation. Now all of a sudden, we're in a great position to hit the ball both long and straight. All right, let's take a look at one. I will slow it down. And then on the second playthrough, I'll zoom in on the ankle and the foot so you can see the motion in action with the ball in the way. Here we go. And for good measure, let's film one from the down the line view. You can see how the action looks from here.
Now this motion all by itself is adequate enough to play wedges and even some short irons, especially if you're trying to flight them or you're trying to really laser in on a like a three-quarter swing or a seven-eighth swing and control the distance right to the yard. It's not necessary to roll the ankle up to its finished position in some of these smaller clubs. You can see on the screen I'm playing some, some Hogan approach shots into the green. You can see he kind of just kept the foot here and he didn't roll it all the way up. But what happens here, once you get into this initial position, then now as you turn through and straighten up, you can roll the foot up onto the ballet position here with your spikes facing away from the target, not on the instep, but up on the tippy toe. Why? Because you cannot support any weight on the tippy toe. So if you can finish on the tippy toe, and not like this, get up like this, it pushes the knee to the front line, allows you to finish your turn, stand up, and stand with all your weight on a loaded up left foot, ensuring that you've made an outstanding weight shift for easy power. Hey, I hope you can understand how getting this move down is critical. It has a critical role in fixing a lot of other issues that you might have in your swing, like early extension, not shifting your weight from back foot to front foot effectively, not rotating your torso enough as you come into your downswing. But what I want you to do is I want you to go get yourself a cheap tripod that you can put your phone on and take a video and zoom in on that right foot and take a look at what it's doing. If it's doing what I'm describing, in roll, lift, heel in front. If it's doing this, you're probably in really great shape with the rest of your downswing. But if it's not, then you'll definitely want to start drilling it starting at home with no club or no ball just moving back and forth practicing the footwork that you want and then moving to pitch shots with a ball in the way just easy pitch maybe 50 yards practice it follow the ball and then look down and check and see if you've done it correctly film yourself about every 10 swings or so to make sure you're doing it correctly consistently. Then you can work up in power. Once you work up in power, you got to think about it less and less until finally you're doing it on the course without thinking at all, which is where we'd like to get. Hey, I hope this tip really helps you get your swing into gear and getting some more power and accuracy out there. I hope it earned me a like and a subscribe. I'm Steve. Thanks again for supporting my channel. And as usual, I'll either see you in the next video or I'll see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Everybody take good care.